this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com, and I've gathered you all here today to take a look at M Wedding 2. Now, this is going to be a pack with transitions, titles, and effects. So, without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Once you have installed M Wedding 2 via M Installer, it can be located in a few places, but first let's go and look at our titles where we can find multiple intros, we have some overlay effects, some placeholders, and some typography presets. The next place you can look for M Wedding 2 will be down in your effects, where we have four different split screen effects. And lastly, they can be located over in your transitions. So the first thing we are going to do is go and just give this clip a little bit of a look. And we can do this using some of our overlay effects up in our titles. So what we can do is quickly scrub over these titles to get a real-time preview in our canvas. You see this one has some drop zones in it. And then we have some blurs, film dirts, things like that. For this, I think we are going to use the vignette blur which is going to be down at the very bottom to just kind of give a bit of a vignette and it's really going to help us focus in on those hands and that bow tie so to apply simply click and drag in above your clip and release and then you can take the handles to adjust the length of the title that is going to affect the clip beneath these are working as adjustment layers So as with all Motion VFX plugins, this is going to be extremely customizable. So if you would like to customize the look of this, make sure that your title is highlighted and go up into your inspector where you're going to find all of your adjustable parameters like your animations. Uh, we've got a color balance here that we can toggle on and off to see how that looks. I really love the way that's affecting our footage, so we're going to keep that on. If you would like to make changes to your shadows, midtones, highlights, uh, your balance mix, all of that is going to be there. As you can see, we have our color slider that we can slide. We have this prism that you can toggle on and off. You see how that's affecting our footage. And then, of course, the blur. And beneath, we have grain. And then we've got grain amount. We've got the scale. You can change your grain type. I mean, like I said, you can really customize this to suit your needs. And of course, it wouldn't be a Motion VFX plugin without the amazing on screen controls that they have. So you can quickly adjust where you want that look with your position and the scale of the overall effect happening on your footage. So we're just going to kind of adjust this up and down until we get it exactly where we want it. Uh, we do want to add a bit of text to this footage as well. So why don't we head back over to our titles and we can find one of our text presets there in M Wedding 2 down in the bottom with the typography presets. So once again, you can kind of skim over these and you're going to get a real-time preview of how they are going to look. Uh, for this, I think I want the date to show up, actually. So why don't we go up to the top and we're going to use date number one preset. So again, simply click and drag on top of your clip to apply. And you can change the duration how you see fit. And then we can head on up to our inspector to make any changes to that title. So just make sure that the title is selected there in the timeline so that we are adjusting the proper parameters. Again, we've got our animations in and out over in our inspector here. We have a content scale that is going to do sort of a global scale on everything. We have content blend mode that is already set how it needs to be. Um, we've got our title text where we can make changes really quickly and really easily. So we can just set this to, you know, the 1st of August, 2023, if we would like. And then beneath, we also have our subtitle text, where you can make some changes there to the bottom. Once again, we've got the font and the subtitle. We can add a shadow, if we would like, that is going to be kind of a global shadow to all of that text there. But it was that simple to add that title, so why don't we take a look at how this looks. 
All right, for our next example, we're gonna use the split screen effect that can be located over in your effects. So why don't we just, uh, we're gonna have our clip highlighted here in our timeline, and then we can scrub over and we can see how those split screens are affecting the footage and how they're animating. So we've got a couple different options. I think we are going to use split screen number two, which is gonna have that kind of left animation in so to apply simply click and drag onto your clip in your timeline and you will already notice that we have that effect working on our footage now before we get into adjusting the parameters i want to set up the next clip that is going to be happening above this is the clip that's going to be coming in on the right side so we're going to use the same split screen and we're going to click and drag that in and it is going to have our footage automatically being applied to the left we do want this drop zone to be placed on the right side so over in our inspector you can see we have animations in and out we've got opacity we have animation direction and then we've got like drop zone opacity we've got drop zone placement but as stated before, we do not want her to be on the left side. We want her to be on the right side. So we're going to do animation direction. We're going to change that to from right. And then we're going to go to our drop zone placement. And we're going to change that over to the right. And now you can see that she is framed on the right side. So now we need to set these clips up to work together. I'm going to pick this clip up drag it on top and then boom here we go they're animating beautifully together we've got one on the left one on the right but honestly i don't really love the way these are animating out together so i think that i'm going to turn off the animation out on each of these effects over in our inspector so that i can add a transition on these clips so just go up to our inspector there with the top clip and then we're going to click the bottom clip and turn animation out off on both of those so that they just stay. So I believe that a placeholder could be used on top of these clips now. So we're going to go back over to our titles and then we can go to placeholders and you see we've got multiple avatars, logo, and then one simply called placeholder, but our avatar number three already has a photographer listed actually so it's great to use for vendors and stuff like that but why don't we just go ahead and pick up our photographer avatar number three and we're going to apply this so again just like any other title just click drag in your timeline and then you can adjust your handles as you see fit but i absolutely love how it just kind of animates in together and then we've got that photographer section right there in the dead center so to adjust some parameters let's just go ahead and click we'll go up you can see we've got animations in and out content scale rotation opacity etc we have the header text and the title text so you can change the name if you want so why don't we just change that from james to jamie and you can see how easily that was done on our title text and then we need to populate our drop zone there. So click the drop zone well, and then go over to locate your footage or photo, whatever you would like to use inside of that drop zone. Uh, we are going to just quickly find a clip of her there showing the couple, some of those photos. So we're just going to kind of find a frame that we like. We can click on that drop zone well, and then go to apply clip. And then you can see that we've got her there in the center. So let's go back over to our inspector here. And we want to adjust the drop zone a bit so that she's a little bit more centered. So we're going to go over and we're going to go in the drop zone pan section. And we're going to click on X. And then we can just adjust that over. And boom, there she is, nice and centered. If we wanted to adjust Y to bring her up or down, you can do so here as well. And check that out. It is beautiful. It's playing that video inside the drop zone. And uh, we can continue on down in our timeline. So I'd like to do a transition between all of this. So the easiest way to do that is to create a compound clip. So I'm just going to highlight all of my clips, press Option G. And then just click OK or press Enter and we're good to go. We now have those as a compound clip. We're going to do the same here. So highlight all of those, 
Option G, create another compound clip. And then we are going to be able to hold all of that animation, all of the color, anything that we've done between these two when we make the transition. All right, so let's go over to our transitions. We're gonna go to M Wedding 2, and we have a few different options. We have a blur, a brighten, uh, desaturation, dim, um, kaleidoscope, and then a slide frame. So, of course, you can skim over these to see that inside of your canvas. I think I like this kaleidoscope, so I'm just gonna click and drag it in between, and you're gonna notice we need to just create a transition since we did have to make these out of compound clip. And once we have looked over that, we notice that we also have the animations going on inside of our photographer clips. So because this transition is kind of affecting those, we're going to double click, go into our compound clip, and we'll just turn each of those animations in. We'll turn those off. And while we're at it, why don't we just go ahead and turn the animation in off on the title as well. And we can turn animation out off as well. And then that way, any transitions that we do, we're good to go. And there's not going to be conflicting animations. So let's just check that out. Boom. The last thing that we want to show you are some of our intros because these are great. They're pre-animated and they are really quick and easy to use. So let's go over to our titles and we're going to find M Wedding 2 and then let's go right back up to our intros and we can scrub over and you can see there's multiple drop zones going on in several of these. We've got intros 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So for this one, we are going to use intro number seven. So we're just going to click that and drag that into our timeline. Again, we can do it just like any other title, but in this example, we are going to place that in our primary storyline there. So as you can see, there are multiple drop zones. So we're gonna go over into our inspector here and you can see we have a ton of adjustable parameters here with noise and defocus and prisms and leaks and all kinds of goodies. But for now, why don't we just focus really on populating each of these drop zones. Uh, by the way, really quickly, if you ever have any additional questions on drop zones, we have a lot of different drop zone tutorials that we have created. So um, let's get back to this. So to populate your drop zone well, click on it, go over and find your videos or your photos, and you can just really quickly click and then go to apply clip. And that is how you are going to apply all of your footage to each of these drop zones. So we are going to speed through that really quickly so that you can see how awesome these animations look. And again, these are built with you in mind so that you can quickly apply your footage or your photos. And then you have created an incredible intro to your wedding videos in a fraction of the time that it would have taken you had you done this all manually. And of course, once you have applied those, you can go into your inspector and you can make adjustments on the pan and scale of each of those drop zones as you see fit. And that is about it from us. Thank you so much for checking out this quick tutorial on M Wedding 2, which is now available on motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.